Okay, looks like we're going live. Hey everybody, it's time to go green. I'm Michael O'Neill. This is the Green Party of New York Facebook page, live streaming to you. I'm going to bring up our page here to see if I can get some real-time comments from y'all. Uh, this is aiming to be the first of a weekly series of live streams about how Greens can get things done. Going over all the things that uh, Greens do in terms of getting on the ballot, uh, reaching out to the public, working with the press, uh, working with graphic design, uh, working with printing you know, new materials and all that good stuff. And uh, things that you wouldn't necessarily know how to do unless you've done it before, unless you've had someone show you how to do it. And not everyone has the opportunity to work with experienced Greens in these areas. So we're broadcasting uh, live here right now from the Green Party of New York Facebook page. These live streams will be available after the streams are over, again, on that Green Party of New York Facebook page and we'll also find a home for them at gpny.org. So if you miss a stream, you can go back, uh, you can watch it again, you can send links to your green comrades so that they can learn all the good stuff that we're, we're going to be talking about on these broadcasts. We're also going to be doing interviews. I'll have in-person people, I'll have people over Skype. I'm going to talk to Greens who are running for office. Uh, Greens who are working as campaign managers. Greens who are working with the campaign finance board. There's a lot of knowledge out there, and uh, we've got a lot of people who have come to the party in the last year, and they want to get to work, and so we want to put all the tools and information out there that we possibly can so people can have the most success possible. So, this week, we are talking about how to get on the ballot as a green candidate for office. Uh, so this is like a 101 overview, uh, hoping that this will, live stream will go about 30 minutes, maybe 30 to 45 minutes, and uh, break it down, and we'll have some reference links for you in the comments after the stream is over. But I'm going to walk you through some of the forms uh, line by line, and I just want to give uh, a big shout out to the Gotham Greens in Manhattan, that's New York County, who just did a training on how to petition to get Greens on the ballot for office, and so I'm going to be uh, borrowing some of their materials, and uh, it was a good refresher going over that with the Gotham Greens this week before doing this live stream. Now, a little bit about my personal history. Uh, my uh, first uh, gig with the Green Party of New York was working as the uh, petition coordinator for the Cynthia McKinney campaign for president in and that was uh, in 2008. So getting Cynthia McKinney on the ballot, that was a statewide petitioning effort. We did not have ballot status at that time. And so we had to turn in a minimum of 15,000 signatures from registered voters. And we actually ended up turning in about uh, double that because that's something we'll go over is you actually need, or it's, it's good to have more than the signatures required on your petition to get on the ballot because that way if your petition gets challenged and if for whatever reason maybe someone gave you a wrong address mistakenly or if they uh, you know, gave you the wrong spelling of their name mistakenly if that signature gets knocked off of your petition you still have plenty to get on the ballot. So I also served as the petition coordinator for the statewide campaign to get Howie Hawkins on the ballot in 2010 and that was for Howie's gubernatorial run and it was through that run for office that Howie exceeded 50,000 votes, got about 75,000 votes actually, and then we got ballot status. So now we don't have to collect quite so many signatures to get on the ballot to run for office. Now, to run for office as a Green, you collect signatures from registered Greens in the district that you're running. So it's a, a petition that you are circulating to the members of our party saying, hey, I want to run for city council or for mayor or for any number of positions, uh, comptroller or for governor. And well, actually for governor, we don't we don't do petitions anymore. Uh, we're able to um, uh, just do nominations from our state committee for statewide office. But that's a that's a different live stream. But for local office, we do petition and 
what I mean is circulating a petition that looks a lot like uh, what I'm about to show you here. I'm just going to make my scene transition here. All right. It's going to look a lot uh, like what you're seeing right now. So this is a template from the Board of Elections website. It's a designating petition for public office. And so if you want to run for city council, mayor, what have you, you circulate a petition like this to the registered Greens who live and are registered to vote in the district where you are running. Now, maybe you don't have plans to run for public office anytime soon, but this is also the same process that we use to be elected to our own Green Party of New York State Committee. So to you know, be, have, have your county represented on our state committee, the highest decision-making body of the Green Party of New York, you need to circulate a petition like this uh, during the summer, and then that gets uh, technically, if you know, we would uh, run for election against each other uh, during the fall primary. If if you had more people petitioning to be on the state committee than you had seats available for in your county. But again, it's a different live stream. But just understand that even if you're not running for uh, public elected office, this still applies to Greens across the state who um, want to be on the state committee. And also, even if you yourself are not maybe planning on running for public office soon, you want to be in a position where you can help someone who does want to run for public office. And so that is uh, important. Now, I want to make sure that uh, you all are hearing me loud and clear. So if you can give me a, a heads up in the comments there to let me know that you're hearing me, that's great. Uh, and if you uh, are liking what I'm having to say or if you have any questions, you can post that to the comments. I am getting those comments on a little bit of a delay, but I am basically getting them live. All right, so I just showed you briefly a sample designating petition from the Board of Elections. We're going to get into more detail on that in a little bit. But first, I want to show you where you can get that template petition along with other resources, and that is on the Board of Elections website. So the way I always go there is just Google New York State Board of Elections. Couldn't be any more simple or direct. Uh, you could Bing it if you want to. Uh, Yahoo probably also still has a functioning search engine. Uh, DuckDuckGo if you're of the anti-surveillance mindset. But in your preferred search engine, type in New York State Board of Elections. It'll take you right there. And on the home page, which is what we're looking at right now, uh, there's a few useful sections here for people who are running for office. And the first question is, okay, I know I need to circulate a petition to run for office, but when do I circulate this petition? When do I go around to Greens? How much time do I have to go around to Greens and get their signature to say that, yes, they will um, support me in my run for office? Well, that is stated on the New York State Board of Elections calendar. There's a political calendar that's released every year. I've got my mouse uh, highlighted over it right now. So you can see there's this 2017 political calendar. And this gets released to show all of the important deadlines for running for office and for other things like campaign finance filings and um, by when you need to be registered to vote, to vote in certain things, things like that. But what's most pertinent to this discussion is on that calendar, which I'm going to open up in a, in a different tab right here. Uh, right here on the, it's on the, actually on the second page, and in the left-hand corner, there's this becoming a candidate section. And it tells you uh, for designating petitions, which is different than an independent nominating petition. Independent nominating petition is if you are not running for office on a ballot status party. If you're running as a Green for public office in a partisan election, you are running in a ballot status party. And thank heaven for that. Uh, so you're going to be using what's called a designating petition. And the first day that you can begin getting signatures from registered Greens in your district for that petition for this year is June 6th. So that's just coming up here. And uh, that's why we're doing this uh, live stream now. And that's why Greens, like the Gotham Greens, just held a petitioning workshop to uh, get their petitions together 
and to train greens on the proper procedure for collecting valid signatures so that way the candidates can on the ballot smooth and easy and we're going to go over that a bit here so you uh, start on june 6th and then you can file your completed petitions anytime between july 10th and july 13th so you've got about six weeks basically june 6th until J july 13th july 13th is the last day that you can file with the board of elections so that's the time period that you're working with and so what you want to do is have your petition and your list of registered greens and a plan for how you're going to reach those people ready before june 6th and that way you're ready to hit the ground running once the clock's the clock starts running now as greens we don't have as much we don't have as many registered voters in our party as say the democrats or republicans for example so we have relatively fewer signatures to collect in order to get on the ballot the way it goes is you need to collect five percent of the registered greens in your district so the more greens you have in your district the more signatures you're going to need to collect it's five percent of that total number and that's the active number of greens so on a different live stream we can do a deep dive into how the voter registration list uh, appears in spreadsheet form but just know that because of laws to ideally prevent unnecessary or wrong purging of voters from voter rolls if someone's um, mail bounces back right if the, if the Board of Elections sends someone a, a postcard or whatever and they get a a return to sender on that saying this voter no longer lives at that address that voter will remain in the Board of Elections database but they will be labeled an inactive voter so that person is still registered to vote they can still show up on Election Day and vote but they're not considered an active person because to the Board of Elections knowledge they do not have a valid address on record within New York State so for our purposes you want to take 5% of the greens that are designated as active within the uh, registered greens list for your area. And later on in this screencast, I'm going to talk about how to order that information from your county board of elections and how to get it with useful contact tact info. All right, so 5% of your active registered greens in your district that's what you're going for you've got six weeks to do it and you can again you can find those dates on the new york state board of elections website they uh, almost always have the political calendar for the year linked from the home page on the right hand sidebar right here next thing to look at is the actual petition so i uh the way you find that uh, petition template that i mentioned which is good to refer back to, although we have in-house templates that uh, we're going to link to in the comments for this uh, broadcast. But um, in the uh, running for office section of the website, it uh, in the left-hand sidebar here, you've got this running for office section. When you go to that page, it shows you requirements for running for office and then it has some information on petitioning and it has a sample designating petition and again we are circulating a designating petition when you're running as a registered green to run on the green party line so it's a sample designating petition there's a link to write to a pdf that takes you to this pdf and we're just going to break this down line by line because if you're going to run for office and circulate a petition that means you have to draft your petition and this is a legal document this uh, needs to comply with uh, legal standards set down by the Board of Elections. And so we're just going to go over those here and then make uh, reference materials available for you to use later. All right, so this is the statement that your petition signer is basically signing that they affirm or agree with. So they state that they're a duly enrolled voter of the Green Party in this case. So in our version of the petition, we're going to put green in this space, uh, that these people are entitled to vote at the next primary election. And again, you are circulating your petition for the primary election, uh, technically. 
and you're going to put the date of that primary election along with the year and that your place of residence stated opposite your signature is correct. In this box here, roughly, is where you're going to put the your name or the candidate's name that you're working with and you're going to put the public office. In this case, we're talking about public office. When we're talking about state committee um, office, you put a party position. But this is where you would put mayor of Syracuse or mayor of the city of New York or um, New York City Council District 1. And you want to make sure that you have the official name of the office that you're running for. And you can check that with your local board of elections. You want to make sure that you have that exactly correct of not just like how people refer to the office, but what's the actual official legal title of the office that you're running for. And then your place of residence, and this should match up where you are registered to vote. And then you have what's called a committee to fill vacancies. That's the second box here. The committee to fill vacancies is, you want to have it on your petition. If there's a problem with it, it's not considered a fatal flaw, which is to say that it's not going to invalidate your, position, your petition if there's a problem with it. But you want to have at least three people in it and they need to be registered Greens. And the job of the Committee to Fill Vacancies is that if you were to become incapacitated between the time that you won the nomination and the time, I guess, to run in the election or the time to serve office, I guess would be the time to run in the election, these people would choose your replacement. So if you petition to get on the ballot, you win the primary, and then you're incapacitated and unable to run in the general election, your Committee to Fill Vacancies would would fill the vacancy that you have created in that election. And so you want to be people that you can trust, but I've, like I said, I've been doing petitions since 2007. I've never seen a vacancy filled, I don't think. Um, all right, so moving past that, getting into the actual signatures. This area here is where people are actually going to sign your petition and they are going to um, provide their signature, obviously. And it's actually best if you fill in everything else. So you want to put in uh, printed their name below their signature. Uh, you can see it indicates printed name here. You print their name and it should be their name as they recall it to appear on their voter registration. And then you put in their residence and then it gets a little strange over here. If they live in New York City, you want to enter their county. But outside of New York City, you want to enter their town or city. Now, here's the thing. Uh, things can get a little tricky with towns, and so you want to make sure that you get this right. Uh, it can be corrected later. The only thing that cannot be corrected later is the actual signature and then also the date. Uh, those need to be clean and those need to be uh, pristine. So uh, you want to make sure that you get their town correct. If you have to, Google check their address and uh, make sure that, that you've got the town or city correct in that date, uh, in that box, I should say. Now, circling back to the date, you're going to see in the next example I'm going to show you is we're actually going to fill out as much of the date ourselves as possible. And we are. Uh, we're going to fill in the date for them. We don't let the signer fill out the date because we want to make sure that it's correct and that there are no problems with it. So you've got the date filled out even before you uh, ask the person to sign your petition. And you can even fill out a few slots ahead uh, if you know you're going to get a few more signatures that day. Then you can uh, give them the place to sign, which is the, the top box here under name of signer. And then after that, pardon me, you have them give the clipboard back to you. And then you print in their name, you print in their residence, you print in their town or city. And then you just go on down the line. Now, if you have an error in your petition with the date or the signature, just draw a line completely through that line on the petition and start over. Don't white anything out. Don't um, black out anything with marker or ink or anything like that. Don't scribble across anything. You never want to appear as if you're trying to conceal something on the petition. 
So if you've got a problem with this uh, signature, draw one line through it, and then start again on the next one. And you do that, you fill out the uh, number of uh, slots that you have on the sheet. Now you get done your statement of witness. Now you, as the person who's collecting these signatures, you are the witness to this petition. And your name appears at the bottom. I'm just gonna mention now, you cannot witness your own signature. So when you sign a petition for yourself to run for office, because why wouldn't you, you are going to have another registered green be the witness to that signature. You cannot witness your own signature. And it's important to note that only greens who are registered green and are recognized as such by the Board of Elections can collect these signatures, can witness these signatures. So if you just changed your registration from no party to green, and you just did that uh, yesterday, you are not able to witness petition signatures because in the eyes of the Board of Elections, you are not a registered green until after the general election in November. It's a bummer, I know, but you cannot be the official witness to a signature. Now you can accompany someone who is a registered green and you can uh, collect signatures together so long as that registered green who's with you is witnessing those signatures, is physically witnessing them, and that registered green's uh, information appears as the statement of witness on the petition. So name, and this should be your name as it appears on your voter registration. And you want to say that you're enrolled, of course, in the Green Party, your residence. And again, we're talking about residence as it appears uh, on your voter registration. You want to put in the number of valid signatures on the sheet. So if you have 10 completed signatures and you believe that they are all valid, you're going to write in 10. Or the person who is combining and, and processing your petitions before filing will write in that. You don't want your random volunteers to be filling in this number. Um, you want the person who's in charge of your petition filing, whether that is you or someone else, they're going to fill in that number after they've already gone through and made sure that all the signatures appear to be valid. Now, if you had a signature mess up, and let's say signature three you had to cross out, then you're not going to put in 10 signatures on this sheet. You're going to put in nine signatures. So uh, that it's only the valid number. Then you're going to date it and then your signature and then um, you're going to put in your town or city and uh, and then your your county and then it's important to note well somewhat important to note there is an exception to the rule i said earlier about only registered greens being eligible to witness petitions the exception to that is if you are a notary public you can witness petition signatures of registered greens if you yourself are not officially a registered greens in the eyes of the board of elections so notary publics out there who are who have tried to register green but it won't take uh effect until after the november elections go hog wild um and, but you want to make sure that your uh petition sheet reflects that and that you're you're filling that out and not just as a statement of witness as a uh, party member. So this is the stock template from the Board of Elections. And if you have ever a question about like what's the legal basis for what a petition should look like, go back to this template that again is found on the running for office section of the Board of Elections website. And you have that to go on. Now I'm going to show you uh, the petition that it was created for uh, two candidates for citywide office this year. We have um, James Lane running for public advocate in the city of New York. Thank you, James. And, uh, and then Julia Willebrand, who is running for comptroller for the city of New York. So this is a petition that, uh, like I said, the Gotham Greens just had a training on. And this is the petition that they have completed for these candidates for this petitioning session in 2017. So it's got uh, the peace sign on it, which is the symbol of our party on the ballot. 
and that's important to include. And uh, it, this language should all look familiar from what we just went over, except that it has the date of the fall primary filled in, 12th day of September, 2017, and that it's the Green Party. And then under name of candidate, so just to compare real quick, right, under name of candidate, we have the names of our candidates, and it's as they appear on their uh, voter registration, the public office that they are running for, and then their place of residence. And then below that, we have the committee to fill vacancies, as we were just discussing. And then on this petition, we have uh, fewer signature slots. Now, you can have as many or as little signature slots in your petition as you want. But the reason that you might want to have fewer is because you want to make sure that you have ample room for your signers to sign their name and for your petition witnesses to print out that information and that you don't have people um, you know, scrawling all over your petition and you know, their signature bleeding onto the next line and things like that. So make sure when you print it out, if you're using letter paper or legal size paper, which I need to be consistent about in your petition, uh, in your petition filing, you want to uh, make sure that, again, that there's plenty of room for people to sign their name, print out their name, and again, we've got a little you know, printed name with a little arrow there for where they're supposed to print their name, and then to have their residence, and then this is New York City, right? So we're doing county here, uh, whereas if it's outside of New York City, they would be filling in their town or city. Now you'll notice on this template, they've already put in 2017, right? Because we know that all the dates on this are going to be 2017, so might as well save yourself having to write that. And then in here is where you would write June 6th or June 7th or July 1st or whatever. You want to spell out June or July and uh, don't use an abbreviation. You, you can use the numeric, right? So you could do like 6-6 six, six for June 6th or 7-6 seven, for July 6th. Best to be consistent about that, at least for the petitions that you are collecting. Uh, but if you're going to do actually June or July in letters, make sure you write out June or July. And so we've got eight signatures here, and then uh, statement of witness, as we were talking about, Green Party is already filled in, and uh, again, slot for the number of valid signatures. And then uh, down here, it's town or city is New York. And since this is for a city, this is for, um, uh, for basically for New York City petitioning, the vast majority of people who are collecting those signatures their town or city as the, the witness is going to be New York. Uh, now, they might have some people who visit out of town who are petitioning, but who are still registered to vote as Greens in New York State. They would need to put in their appropriate town or city. And you also need to put in your county. One thing I did not mention on the template page was the uh, sheet number section. So when you are getting ready to file your petitions, you're going to bind them up. Uh, with a staple or um, those two-prong binder clips. You need to fasten them together. You are going to number the sheets in sequential order. And this is really important, and it's really important that your sheet numbers are correct. Uh, you can have entire sheets of petition signatures that you worked hard to get be invalidated because the numbers were not correct. So your petition signature collectors your volunteers who are collecting signatures for you, witnessing petitions for you, they are not going to fill in that sheet number area. Uh, that's the sheet number area down here. They're not going to fill that in. It's whoever is in charge of actually filing your petition, they will get all the pages together and then they will very carefully number those petition sheets to make sure it's correct. In addition to, as I mentioned earlier, filling in the number of signatures. So this is an actual working petition that's going to be circulated this year and in the next you know, few weeks. And uh, it gives you a chance to see what it looks like. And again, thanks very much to the Gotham Greens for uh, getting petition training going in, in New York City. All right, so how do you find your Greens, your registered Greens, to actually sign these petitions? The, w the most direct way is to get a list of registered Green Party voters from the Board of Elections. And the way you do that is you want to contact your County Board of Elections 
And so you wanna look them up. Again, Bing, Google, Yahoo, whatever you wanna use, search for your county's board of elections, call them up, and you're gonna ask them who you should email to request a list of registered greens for your county. And they will let you know which email address to send to. You wanna be really specific in your request because some board of elections, well, they're, they're all different across the state and they are partisan run. In every board of elections, there's a Republican commissioner and a Democrat commissioner. And these are basically, you know, party apparatchiks. And so they get on autopilot with people requesting the same things over, over and over from them because they're used to dealing with the same party apparatuses over and over. If it's the first time in a while that uh, the Green Party has been active in your county, then they may not necessarily understand what you're looking for. Or they might be trying to mess with you. That happens too. So, or they're just not making you a high priority because we're third parties and third parties um, get discriminated against in our political culture. So you want to call them up and you want be, be polite, be clear, say who you are, introduce yourself, and say that you'd like to send a request by email to um, get the list of registered greens for your county. Now they might direct you to an online form to make that request. If so, that's fine. Be respectful, be courteous, do what they um, ask you to do. But the upshot is that whether you're doing it by email or by online form, you wanna put in writing what you are requesting. And so you're requesting a digital copy of the registered greens of your county from the county voter database. So you don't want a printout, you don't want a booklet, you want a digital copy. And the reason you want a digital copy is because you want to be able to sort and filter your greens list by um, street name or by zip code uh, or by, um, voter history, or even by the date that they registered. If you're looking up Greens to sign your petition for office, it's really helpful to reach out to Greens who have registered to the party most recently because their contact information is most likely to be correct. The reason we are requesting this from your county board of elections is that there's a good chance that you're gonna have phone numbers for at least some of these registered Greens in your county, and that can make things a lot easier. To be able to call someone up and introduce yourself and let them know that you're running for office and that you'd like their signature on your petition to run for office, that can really save you some time instead of just going to someone's house and knocking on their door and maybe they're home, maybe they're not, you know, maybe they're home, but then you have to go through the spiel of introducing yourself. So it's great to call any Greens that you can find phone numbers for. So you're requesting a digital copy of the registered Greens in your county and you are seeking all available voter contact information including phone numbers, and you want to spell that out. You are asking for phone numbers. You are also asking for voter history. In my experience, counties do this differently. They've got different systems in different uh, counties. I think they have different generations of systems in different counties, and so sometimes they give you phone numbers by default, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they include voter history, sometimes they don't. So you want to be specific and put in writing that you are asking for phone numbers, including any other contact information that they have, which would be uh, addresses, mailing addresses, all that good stuff. And you wanna get this as a CSV file or an Excel file, if possible. You wanna clarify that. In my experience in working with different county board of elections, they will sometimes send you an XML file, which is not a super easy format to work with. An Excel format is Microsoft Excel. It also opens in uh, Zoho Office or Google Spreadsheets or LibreOffice or OpenOffice. So you don't have to pay for Microsoft Office to open these spreadsheet files. There's various open source and free Libra software out there for you to work with these file formats. .csv is a little less well known than Excel, but it's, it's just a spreadsheet format. And it's a, it's a more open, uh, less proprietary format and it's also frequently saves you on space uh, in terms of the file size. But you don't want them to send you XML. There's no point to it. And if they try to send you XML, uh, you can work with that, but 
if at all possible, have them send it to you as a proper spreadsheet. You want to put in your written request that, you know, if they have any questions for you, you're happy to answer them, uh, thank them for their public service. Uh, again, always be courteous. Even if they're giving you grief, even if they're being frustrating, uh, even if they haven't responded to your request, like you, you want to keep cool, you want to be persistent, you want to be assertive, you want to know what your rights are, and you want to put forward that you know what your rights are and this is public information that you have a right to, and you have a right to it in an efficient, expedient manner, but always be courteous, be cool, and keep your wits about you. And then you wanna put in your name, your phone number so that they can contact you if you need be, and if you uh, have a position in your Green Party uh, affiliated county organization, or if you're a you know state committee member or what have you, go ahead and put that in there too. So they know that they're dealing with someone who's a party officer, someone who knows what they're doing, and that they better not mess with you. So that is what you wanna send in writing, either by, by email or by online form, and you wanna get the proper channel for that by calling up your county board of elections and saying what you're looking for and who should you email about that. If they don't get back to you, I would say within a couple business days, then send a follow-up and just say, hey, I just want to make sure that my request went through. If you could please let me know when I can expect to get this information, or if you have any questions, or if there's any trouble with my request, please let me know about that. What you're looking for is a sign of life from the Board of Elections office that you're dealing with. And again, you want to be patient. Well, well not patient necessarily, but you want to keep calm, uh, be polite, be assertive, and uh, let them know that you're watching and that you're, you haven't forgotten about this and that you wanna make sure that they have not forgotten about you. And, and then they should let you know, okay, well, we'll have it to you tomorrow or we'll have it to you in three business days or what have you. And then mark your calendar. And if you haven't gotten it by that point, then follow up with them again. Be polite, but be persistent. And, you know, and re-specify what it is that you're asking for. And then you should get that back by email all right, so um, this is actually a, a workshop outline that the Gotham Greens used at their petition training uh, just earlier this past week, and I'm just looking over that to make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, as I mentioned, it's 5% of the enrolled Greens in your district. That's enrolled active Greens. So let's talk about how you actually go and get these signatures. Well, you're going to have your, your petition printed out. Uh, I, I have found... This is working as um, doing Green Party petitioning in New York City, which I understand is a highly specific circumstance. So it may not be applicable across the state, but I'm just coming at you with my own personal experience. In New York City, I lived in Brooklyn for um, 15 years. I recently moved to Syracuse. Uh, but when I petitioned for Green Party State Committee and for other candidates running for office in Brooklyn, we would call up registered greens, greens that we know from our work and from county meetings and from events and things like that, but also new greens that we were discovering through the Board of Elections voter registration list that we got those phone numbers for, super important. We would call them up and try to schedule basically an appointment. So introduce yourself, hi, I'm running for office for such and such, or my friend is running for office for such and such, and we need signatures from registered greens such as yourself to um, run for office to get on the ballot, so we would love for you to please sign our petition. Is there a time when I could meet you either at home or work? should only take a few minutes, uh, but we need your signature, and, and I or another registered green have to witness your signature. So they can't just print out the petition, sign it, and mail it to you, right? You cannot, you cannot send them a PDF, have them print it, sign it, and mail it to you. You or another registered green, or technically a notary public, has to witness that signature, and they cannot do it online. So these are frequently asked questions that we get when we are petitioning. So you make an appointment, you uh, go, you knock on the door, you've got your printed out petitions, you want to have a clipboard, all right? So this is a this is a, an old favorite um, clipboard that we uh, use here um, in New York State, uh, and you've probably seen maybe at different events. Uh, so this is just some uh, corrugated plastic re, uh, repurposed from a uh, lawn sign. And you get your binder clip on top. 
So you clip your petition at the top and you're ready to go. The worst thing is that you've done the work of creating your petition, finding your registered greens, going out to registered greens and getting their signatures, and then losing those signatures. Okay, that's the worst. Don't let that happen. It's, it, will, it will ruin your month. You'll feel so bad. So you want to make sure that you keep your petitions on your clipboard, at least the ones that, as you're actually actively out circulating them. When you get home, you want to file them away, safe and sound. And uh, when you're out collecting signatures, you want to make sure that your petitions are not getting wet. Uh, but at the very least, you want to make sure that you're keeping them together. So you want to have a clipboard, whether it's a standard clipboard or a, a, a refashioned binder clip, corrugated plastic clipboard like this. Or if you want to go pro tier, all right, you get the uh, you get the hard case, right? So you get your your clipboard action up here, and then this this opens up, and uh, you got uh, you have your extra sheets in there. You have your other sign up sheets in there just for party stuff. And, uh, and also, when the, your completed sheets you can put inside, and that will help protect them against the elements uh, from you know, falling on the ground and getting trampled on, or falling into a puddle, or um, you know, stolen away by a squirrel. Any of these things can happen when you're out petitioning. So this is the more pro-tier uh, clipboard. If uh, you don't want to go plastic, of course, you can get these in oh, what, stainless steel or aluminum or whatever. And uh, Keep in mind that yes, you're going out to get these signatures, but you also, this is a chance to talk to a registered green. This is a chance to talk to a fellow member of our party. And these might be people who've never had any personal interaction with other greens before. If these are people who are brand new to the party, or if you uh, haven't had an active green party in your area for quite a while. So really make the most of it. Uh, get to know them, ask about the issues that they're interested in, or the issues that they've even worked on or have done activism on. You wanna tell them about uh, campaigns that we have going on in addition to the electoral campaign, like for instance, our campaign for single payer healthcare in New York State, which I'm gonna talk about in just a moment. But um, you want to make sure that you have a general sign-up sheet so that you're not just getting their signature and their address. Uh, you wanna, number one, confirm their phone number, and you want to get a cell phone number, if they have it, that's different than the number that you had on record. Uh, write down a couple things about like, um, do they have any particular skills that they'd like to offer? Are there particular issues that they want to work on? Um, you want to definitely get their email address and make sure that that goes into the list that you are building for your county activism and that it eventually gets its way into the state database so we can keep these people informed about what the Green Party is doing both in their area and across the state. So. You want to do more than just get the signature on their petition. You want to make a connection with these people. You want to make sure you get their contact information so you can follow up with them and invite them to uh, events or to get a cup of coffee to talk about uh, you know, how they'd like to get involved in the Green Party or get involved in your campaign. Uh, invite them to your next volunteer night. You also uh, can let these people know about our supporting members dues program, which uh, this is a, an envelope which uh, we want to get these more widespread, but you likely will not have access to this. But you can go to the uh, Green Party of New York website and have people sign up to become dues-paying supporting members, which is a recurring dues program for registered Greens to help support the party. And half of those dues will get uh, rebated to your county organization if you have an affiliated county organization in your county and so their dues will help uh, build the party at the state level, but also uh, at the county level as well. So uh, we can make that part of the resources for this uh, live stream it is a printable form for the uh, supporting members dues. And they may not sign up right then and there, right? Especially if this is the first time that someone from the Green Party is talking to them. Don't do a hard sell on that just uh, introduce the idea and let them know that it's available and, and underline that we have this program because we are a grassroots party and so we need grassroots funding. In order to be politically independent, we must be financially independent. We do not take money from the corporations or their lobbyists. We are not even eligible for you know big grants from foundations and things like that and it probably wouldn't be a good idea to take them even if we were eligible. We rely on funding from Green Party members uh, like you 
and like them. So just plant that seed, and it's likely they might not sign up then, but uh, you know a few more actions from then, a few more interactions, they might be ready to. All right. So uh, you got your petitions, you're getting your signatures. Um, we're not going to go into binding and cleaning petitions on this screencast because it is pretty involved. If you have questions about um, <clears throat> running for office and petitioning, you can email me at michael at gpny.org. Again, that's michael at gpny.org. And uh, we can you know, do, your, do our best to hook you up with petitioning expertise in your region or someone who can help you in a more telecommuting way. Um, but um, that is about it for petitioning. But I wanted to underline, uh, as I was talking about, we have a, right now, uh, a statewide campaign for uh, single-payer health care. And you can find out more about this campaign by going to gpny.org slash healthcare. And this is a great opportunity while you're out petitioning to talk to registered Greens about a, an issue campaign that we're hoping that Greens get involved with across the state on a truly universal issue. We believe that healthcare is a human right. And, we, and the um, proposed uh, New York Health Act, which would create single-payer universal health care in New York State uh, is a great opportunity to establish that service in New York State. And the New York, um, the campaign for New York Health has been doing amazing work putting together a very broad-based coalition with some fantastic organizing tools that uh, we are able to adapt here uh, within the Green Party and to, number one, uh, talk to people we haven't talked to to before and uh, to radical, radicalize registered greens on this issue and to build our muscles uh, on this particular issue and our, our grassroots outreach skills in general. And we've got some tools to do that. Um, and, and also for the Green Party of New York to really make a difference in participating in this broader campaign, this broader coalition to um, pass this historic bill that would establish single-payer universal health care. Now, I keep saying single-payer. What does that mean? I'm not going to go too deep into that now because I'm already over time, but it means that the government, essentially, would be the single-payer for health insurance in New York State. So when we talk about single-payer health care, we're talking about single-payer health insurance. So rather than me being on one health insurance provider and you being on a different health insurance provider, we pay as part of our state taxes into a statewide health insurance plan and then the statewide health insurance plan it then pays for our medical expenses uh, as a, a regular insurance uh, organization would and it takes the profit motive out of health insurance it takes away a lot of the administrative overhead, it certainly takes away the, the marketing overhead that these for-profit health insurance companies cover, it takes out all the crazy CEO bonuses and, and other you know executive bonuses that inflate healthcare costs. And it just creates a more just, humane system. It's like Medicare for all, basically. Everybody's in the same plan, nobody's left out, and because we're all contributing to the same plan, it's going to be much lower health insurance for the vast majority of us, for like 98% of us across the state. We're going to be paying significantly less for our health insurance, assuming you can even afford health insurance, right? And boy, if you're self-employed or a freelancer or an independent contractor, you're paying through the nose for health insurance, most likely. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be much less expensive for the vast majority of us, and it's going to be um, much more just and humane and equitable because people will not be left out. We won't have people falling through the cracks because they couldn't afford health insurance. We won't have people foregoing medication or treatment or waiting to see a doctor uh, because they couldn't afford it or they didn't think they could afford it. It'll be uh, just much. Um, much more just in establishing health care as a human right for all New Yorkers. So this is the uh, resource page that we have online right now. It's at gpny.org slash health care. And there are uh, links on there to a, a survey 
that were asking people to canvas in their neighborhoods and and you know I've talked about this bringing it up to your registered greens who you're petitioning to but we also want to do this to people who are not registered greens to people in your community people in your neighborhood and we have a a survey which is a survey that you want to walk people through and you can do that uh, by printing a PDF and, and printing that out and it, it basically it invites people to tell their stories regarding health care and any barriers to access to health care that they've experienced because of uh, cost and we need it's important to have these stories because these stories need to be part of the public conversation when we talk about how the uh, corporate health care system we have the for-profit health insurance system we have routinely denies people treatment and services because people can't afford it and that's just not right and it's important to have the numbers it's important to have the economics but what's really going to move the political will on this issue is human stories that's what people need to hear so we have the survey you can print the PDF as you're knocking on doors or as you're talking to people at the farmers market or the street fair or the subway station or the bus stop or what have you you probably won't get a lot of people uh, the majority of people are probably not going to say yes to taking the survey. It's going to be maybe one in three or one in five. That's okay. It is a, it's, it's a multi-page survey. It takes a little bit of time to fill out. If they say no to that, then you ask them if, if they can sign our petition for single payer. And uh, in signing that petition, we, uh, number one, are, are getting these signatures to, now this is different from a, a um, petition to get on the ballot for public office, right? This is a petition of, of signatures that we are turning in to pressure the state Senate and Governor Cuomo <clears throat> to pass single-payer health care in New York State. And it's giving people a chance to say, you know, this is who I am, this is where I live, and I believe we should have single-payer health care. That they're much more likely to say yes to because it's just a shorter thing to do. Um, and you can uh, email scans of that PDF that completed petition to healthcare at gpny.org so that we get that information and compile it to, to send in and also then we can reach out to these people to let them know more about this statewide initiative and what we're doing to fight for health care for all New Yorkers and other aspects of the Green Party platform and we also have a specific petition for business owners self-employed people and freelancers and so that's a great thing to take to your local coffee shop or um, pharmacy or comic book store or stationery or a flower shop or whatever. Uh, let people know that uh, a single payer system would alleviate significant costs for the self employed business owners, especially small business owners and freelancers. And so uh, we want to have those stories told as well. And then we also have a handout that you can print out and cut up and uh, leave with people so that they can learn more about this issue and about this bill that uh, is addressing this issue. So these are all things that you can have with you while you're petitioning for office to talk to your registered greens to get them involved in this uh, statewide health care initiative. And it's something you can talk about as you are running for office or your friend is running for office, how you know you as a candidate or the campaign you're working with stands for single-payer universal health care for all New Yorkers that you uh, endorse this bill to be passed and that um, it's something that you and the rest of the Green Party are fighting for and this is something that they can get involved in immediately right you can give them the link to this web page gpny.org slash healthcare and they can get the survey print out and they can get the business the small business petition and they can get the the flyers and they can begin canvassing their own neighbors and their own family members and friends and things like that and it's it's a a easy way a simple way at the very least for people to get involved and start contributing meaningfully to an issue, which is what people want to do. They want to feel like their actions matter and that they are fighting for something that they believe in. All right, so we've talked about petitioning. Uh, we have talked about the campaign for single-payer health. It's about 5 of 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, let's see if I have any comments at this point. Uh, we've got a couple shares. We've got a couple people watching. That's appreciated. And... Um, I just want to thank everyone who did watch this, and uh, please, if you found this helpful, please
please forward it to uh, other registered greens, other uh, local greens in your area. And if you are looking to start a new Green Party chapter or Green Party organization in your area, feel free to contact me, Michael, at gpny.org. Again, that's Michael at gpny.org. I am a uh, staff organizer slash admin assistant for the Green Party of New York, and it is my pleasure and my duty to help Greens get organized across New York State. Uh, feel free to leave uh, some comments if you're watching this after the live stream. It would be great to know what people thought about this live stream, if you thought, found it was helpful, if there was anything uh, that was particularly difficult about it, like if the, you know, the screen text was too small to read, or if I'm not loud enough, or if I'm too loud, or anything like that. Uh, this is kind of an experiment for us, and uh, we really appreciate your feedback to make it better and better every time. So, my name is Michael O'Neill. Uh, this has been Time to Go Green, and I look forward to seeing you next week and online. Feel free to look up our Green Party of New York Facebook group and request to join. Uh, feel free to leave your comments um, on our Green Party of New York Facebook page. Make sure you're getting our emails uh, from our actual website at gpny.org. Make sure you're signed up to get updates from us. That is the most direct way to find out about Green Party events, such as the state uh, committee and rank and file meeting we had just last weekend, where we renewed our platform for the year, and look for updates about that platform, and uh, more about how to get together in your community with other Greens, and how you can contribute to statewide and nationwide Green Party uh, initiatives and campaigns. So thanks again for, wa for watching. And I look forward to uh, talking to you next week.